Welcome to the JM Data Fiber YouTube channel. Today I'd like to present our DOCSIS 3.1 fiber node to you. Here we have the DOCSIS unit, including power supply, and here's the module that deals with all television tasks. First off, I'd like to explain the differences from a conventional fiber node. Our advantages are cost savings, being technologically neutral for the end user, Flexibility regarding network expansion. Your existing TV station can be retained. Decentralized management guaranteeing fail-safe performance. All managed within JM Data Admin. Our system saves on costs because you don't need any central components like return path TV transmitters, advanced path TV transmitters or other central platforms. With our variant, you can use the same IP addresses as with FTTH products, so a switch of technology is possible any time. What's more, our variant is more flexible because you can manage every output yourself, choosing between DOCSIS 2.0 or DOCSIS 3.0 or indeed DOCSIS 3.1 or simply mixed. And now I'd like to explain what goes on under the hood. Here's the DOCSIS module. Here's the power supply, configurable for 220 volts or 60 to 90 volts. And this is where all the TV processing happens. Here is the connection for TV overlay via 1550 nanometers, allowing simple operation of TV overlay. And here is the connection to the TV module. Here once again is the DOCSIS and CMTS unit, and here we get to the downstream and the two upstreams, which are then passed to the TV module and combined. Located on the DOCSIS unit is the management port. Here's the management port, which allows you to connect externally via IP. Here's the console for initial configuration or debugging. Here's the connection to the TV node, which allows you to deal with all configurations remotely. Of course, the node must also be connected via IP and Ethernet. Here you can use SFP Plus modules like 10G, 1G or XPON modules. Copper or glass modules with speeds of 1 gigabit or 10 gigabits also work. Also worth emphasizing is that GEPON and PON modules also work fine. All external connections are completely waterproof. There are ports for power, fiber and all HF lines. If you want to run TV overlay and IP onto one fiber, here's the space for a CWDM or WDM. This is where the whole fiber node is located. The blue cable is the feed from the DOCSIS unit. The fiber unit consists of two halves. Here's the first half, or right side, and here's the second half. The advantage is that this way you can completely separate and manage the two upstreams. The DOCSIS downstream is mixed with the TV signal here. This is where you can connect the high-pass filter. The 87 to 1218 MHz is plugged in here. But there are also high-pass filters such as 200 MHz to 1218 MHz. In the EU area, this one is used most. These are the test sockets. Here you can measure everything with test equipment. Again, on the schematic, you can see how the downstream is split into left and right. After this split, the upstream is again split into two directions, once again to the left and right halves. But it's the same upstream module for one of each of them. You have another option here, to put a 30 dB attenuator on any output, to attenuate it remotely by using JM Data Admin or the web interface of the DOCSIS node. This attenuation only works on upstream, allowing you to trace upstream faults. If you attenuate an output, only upstream is affected in the forward direction, so TV continues to function without problems for the consumer. This is the low-pass filter covering 5 to 65 MHz, which can be swapped any time to a different module like 5 to 200 MHz, and then used with full DOCSIS 3.1. Here are the diplex filters. The corresponding test sockets are also fitted, of course. Thus, you can measure each output separately and any time. This is where the shunt plugs in, activating the 60 
50 volt supply. It can be plugged into each output separately. For safety's sake, there's also a fuse on each output, which allows 60 volts or up to 90 volts to be fed onto the outputs. On the other side, there's the same thing, like I showed you before, just simply mirrored. The two outputs again, for the second upstream. So, these two outputs can be remotely attenuated in the event of faults. Again, the test sockets. All settings that can be done at the fiber node are described here in the fiber node and can be configured here without equipment using the buttons. The important advantage of this FTTH fiber node is that it replaces an existing CMTS and fiber node pair. As a result, you don't need anything else at the head end station or in the field. No advanced path or return path transmitters and no CMTS anymore either. Everything is covered by this device. If the TV module develops a fault, then just remove five screws to change it easily with the device still operating. Just unscrew and remove. It's important to note that all the connectors of so-called armatures stay in place, so you don't need to do any changeovers. The TV module connects to the baseboard via a single plug. And now, here are the specifications. The frequency range is 5 MHz to 1.2 GHz. This product can handle DOCSIS 3.1 with 6 times OFDM and 2x2 OFDMA channels, as well as up to 64 DOCSIS 3.0 downstream channels and 2x12 upstream channels, 64 unicast and 32 multicast IPTV channels, 4 independent output channels, one SFP plus optical input for 1 gigabit, 10 gigabit and XPON connections. TV output level 112 dB. DOCSIS versions 2.0, 3.0, 3.1. Mixed operation incorporating DOCSIS 3.1 and DOCSIS 3.0 and 2.0. Ambient temperature condition minus 40 to 55 degrees Celsius. Outdoor chassis. Thank you for your interest, and if you have any questions or requests, call a member of JM Day Data staff anytime. I'm Jürgen Meixner, thanks for watching.